इंट्रोडक्शन एम एस एस कोर्स माय सेल्फ सुरेंद्रनाथ एस जाधव असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर सिविल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट के आई टी सी के कोल्हापुर एंड दिस इज़ अवर यूनिट नंबर वन दैट इज कंबाइंड टैरेट एंड बेंडिंग स्ट्रेस दिस इज़ अवर लेसन नंबर फोर बिफोर दैट वी जस्ट रिकॉल वॉट वी डिस्कस्ड इन लेसन नंबर थ्री वी डिस्कस अबाउट द कॉलम ऑफ अनसिमेट्रिकल क्रॉस सेक्शन सब्जेक्टेड टू इसेंट्रिक लोड इन दैट दीज स्टेप्स आर जस्ट स्मॉल डिफरेंस वॉट एर वी फाइंड वॉट एर वी डिटरमाइन इन सिमेट्रिकल क्रॉस सेक्शन सो स्टेप्स यूज टू डिटरमाइन द स्ट्रेसेस ऑन अनसिमेट्रिकल कॉलम सेक्शन आर द डिटरमाइन the cg of the unsymmetrical section then determine the moment of inertia of section about axis passing through the uh, cg calculate the distance between the corners of the section and its uh, cg and then we calculate the stresses on each corner by using our regular formulas uh, this is our uh, lesson number 4 in that we uh, understand what is mean by kernel of the section so uh, what is mean by kernel of the section so generally the kernel of the section in the area within which the line of action of eccentric load should pass so that the tensile stress is zero so we find out the area where the eccentric load can uh, cannot uh, create the tensile stress in the uh, section so the kernel of the section is also called as the core of the section so here we we are uh, calculating the kernel of the section or core of the section for the rectangular section as well as the circular section first uh, section is the rectangular section so uh, let us consider one rectangular section of width small b and depth d so here you can see this is our rectangle section of width p and depth d so here xx and yy are the uh, centroidal axis of the rectangle section and uh, here uh, the section is subjected to the load which is eccentric to the yy axis so we are considering one load which is eccentric with the yy axis and uh, the uh, uh, magnitude of load is p so p is eccentric load acting on the column small e is eccentricity of the load capital a is the area of the rectangular cross section so from that uh, these are the symmetrical sections so we know how can we calculate the resultant stress on the rectangular section uh, symmetrical section uh, which is eccentrically loaded in one axis so minimum stress from this uh, type of loading we get the p by a in bracket 1 minus 6e divided by b here we have to find out the minimum we have to find out the eccentricity here so if the sigma minimum that is the minimum uh, resultant stress is negative negative means the stress is will be tensile okay so we don't want tensile stress so for that we require sigma minimum it should be zero or more positive that means no tensile uh, no tension along the width of the column section so for that we have to find out the no tension stress along the width of the column so we know that negative stress minimum stress is means tensile stress so our minimum tensile stress minimum resultant stress should be less than should be should not be less than zero so minimum ten, minimum uh, resultant stress should be more than zero or equal to zero so we know the formula for a sigma minimum that is p by a in bracket 1 minus 6e divided by b and that should not be uh, less than zero it should be greater than or equal to zero so after calculating we uh, we can get here the expression 1 should be greater than or equal to 6e divided by b and from that we will get the eccentricity should be 
less than or equal to p by 6 that means our eccentric load should be uh, placed such a that our eccentricity it eccentricity should be less than or equal to b by 6 then that will creates uh, no tension stress no tensile stress inside the uh, rectangular cross section so we we get the uh, eccentricity that should be less than or equal to b by 6 if we required uh, no tension condition okay so the greatest eccentricity of the load is b by 6 from y y axis if the load is applied at a, any any distance less than b by 6 from the axis on any side of the y y axis the stress are wholly compressive their uh, sigma minimum should not be uh, less than 0 that case so uh, the range within which the load can apply it so as not to produce any tensile stress is within the middle third of the base because on the uh, right hand side b by 6 left hand left hand side b by 6 so total b by 3 so that means that distance is middle third of the base so that we calculated for along the width similarly we can find out along the depth if the load had been eccentric with respect to the axis xx the condition that tensile stress will not occur is when the eccentricity of the load with respect to xx does not exceed the d by 6 okay as similar to the width component that is b by 6 so the range within which the load may be applied is within the middle third of the depth okay so if we uh, if we draw that uh, uh, that component that uh, points maximum eccentricity points on the rectangular column sections from the cg okay so on the right hand side on the distance b by 6 we will get the c c point on the left hand side at a distance of b by 6 we get the a point similarly on the up upside that is along the uh, similar uh, similar to the uh, means parallel to the a y y axis at a distance of d by 6 we get the d point and the bottom side uh, we we can get the b point so after uh, joining a b c d we get that rhombus a b c d okay which having uh, total ac distance is b by 3 and bd distance is d by 3 so a b c d within which the load may be applied anywhere so as not to produce the tensile stress in any part of the entire rectangular section and that is nothing but the core of the section or kernel of the section so here we discuss how to find out the kernel of the section for the rectangle section okay and that is nothing but the middle uh, middle third rule similarly we can calculate the kernel of the section for the circular section here we are considering the uh, diameter of the circular section is small d so here you can see this is the circular section having total depth uh, total diameter is small d and the cg is at the center of the circle so the section is subjected to the eccentric load about y y axis p is the eccentric load acting on the column circular column and e is small e is eccentricity of the load capital a is area of the section and that area is nothing but the pi by 4 d square for the circular section so we can cal calculate the direct stress that is nothing but sigma naught is equal to load upon cross section area so load is capital p divided by area that is pi by 4 d square from that we get the direct stress that is nothing but the 4 p upon pi d square and then we can calculate the bending stress that is sigma b the formula is m upon i moment of inertia uh, sorry bending moment upon moment of inertia so we can get the maximum bending bending stress on the extreme edge of the circular section so here uh, maximum 
bending stress at y is nothing but the plus minus d by 2. So, uh, maximum bending stress is sigma b is equal to m upon i multiplied by y. So, y is here plus minus d by 2. So, after putting m value, i value, we can get, so p multiplied by e is m divided by moment of inertia is pi by 64 d raise to 4 multiply by y, maximum y is plus minus d by 2. After putting all these things, we can get the maximum bending stress is plus minus 32 p e divided by pi d cube. So, that is the maximum bending stress. So, we have to find out the minimum resultant stress. That minimum result stress is nothing but sigma minimum is equal to direct stress minus bending stress. So, direct stress is 4 p divided by pi d square minus bending stress is 32 p e divided by pi d cube. So, this is our sigma minimum. So, for no tension, uh, no tension condition or no tensile stress, that minimum uh, resultant stress should not be less than 0, that should be more than or equal to 0. So, for this uh, fulfillment of this condition, we have to put the sigma minimum value here, that is 4p divided by pi d square minus 32p e divided by pi d cube, it should be greater than or equal to 0. Put uh, After that, uh, take uh, common things away, that is 4p divided by pi d square, in fr uh, first case 1 minus in second 8 e divided by d and that should be greater than or equal to 0. So, common thing 4 p divided by pi d square that should be goes right hand side and that becomes 0. So, in bracket terms, so 1 should be greater than or equal to 8 e divided by d and from that we will get the essentiality it should be less than or equal to d by 8. So, that is the eccentricity where uh, the eccentric load should be should not be away from the center of the circle. If that uh, eccentric load is away from the cent, uh, center of circle, then uh, tensile stress will be arise in the section. So, result shows that the eccentricity small e must be less than or equal to d by 8. So, it means that the load can be eccentric on any side of the center of the circle by an amount of d by 8. Thus, if the line, line of action of load is within the circle of diameter equal to one fourth of the main circle as shown in figure and that circle, that hatch portion in the figure that is nothing but the core of the section or kernel of the section. So, within which we can place our eccentric, eccentric load, then no any tensile stress will be uh, developed in the circular section. Thank you.